on Transmart and chronic kidney disease in Africa. And I get to do the fun part, um, human impact of Transmart on, on this disease. And Becky, then I'm gonna turn it over to Becky and she is going to cover the more technical side. So we have empowering global research networks to advance healthcare for underserved populations. So Transmart is able to give an alternative, um, a kind of a grassroots alternative because it's open sourced for researchers to delve into specific diseases. Um, and particularly, this is a great thing for underserved health crises. So just to kind of give the alternative, the alternative of course is a, form, a pharma model. And so pharma that everything's proprietary, everything's in-house. And what does it take? Lots and lots of cash. And what do they expect back? Lots and lots of cash for their drug therapies they develop. Well, of course, not all patient populations are ones where um, you can expect a lot of money back. So for example, chronic kidney disease affects the poorest of the poor and is the 10th leading cause of death worldwide, according to the WHO. So that isn't ser well served by this model um, and instead would be served by a Transmart model. And in fact, there's this wonderful group, the Human and Hereditary Health in Africa Consortium. And all their work is, is geared toward empowering African researchers to be competitive in genomic sciences and epidemiology. And this is a really wonderful group that it has connections from, as you can see, the top of Africa to the bottom of Africa and the islands. And all these people are working together toward a lot of diseases in Africa. Um, and their focus is alleviating the burden of disease in Africa using genomics. And not only that, they are really focused on empowering others in Africa, increasing the, the, um, the number of people who are well-trained in genomics research and in Transmart. So there's continually trainings in how to use Transmart um, because it's this really democratizing force in genomic research. Anyone can use it, anyone can access not just their own data, but a group of people's data, all focused toward a common disease. And they're also really focused on best practices for community engagement. So you have not only this development of intelligentsia, but it, a grassroots on the ground. What are the diseases affecting people? How do we best connect with people on the ground? So this is a really wonderful example of international collaboration between Transmart and this group in Africa that's empowering others. Um, and Africa, of course, is the seat of genetic disease. So if you want to understand how disease affects and the diseases and genes interact, you should really start in Africa. So having this group focused on that is a really uh, important thing for all of our health. It moves away, in fact, from a Eurocentric view of, of disease and a Eurocentric genetic look at how diseases and um, genes interact. So HC Africa, before Transmart came along, it was running into a problem. They had so much data because they had 51 projects. They have 500 plus consortium members. They had, are across 30 countries. You can imagine 7,000 research participants, um, three bio repositories. So you can imagine this much data becoming a real hassle rather than an, an asset. So um, then they used Transmart and uh, just a kind of a, what is Transmart moment. So Transmart, so if you imagine, instead of the pharma model where everything is in one place and everyone works together in kind of a hive, um, this allows people who are in separate spaces focus on a disease rather than being siloed. So you can imagine she's working there, he's in another country, he's in another country, she's in another country. Each of you have your own particular resources and tools and methodologies, but they're all siloed. But instead of being siloed, Transmart kind of gives a centralized space for all those things to exist, um, for everyone to access it, as well as providing um, visualizations and models and tools that can really um, kind of get to the, to the, to the real um, powerful, become powerful tools to make the data better understood. Um, it can even ease the path toward clinical trials. So what you have is kind of a virtuous cycle of building alliances between researchers that may have been siloed before, but now can really collaborate in powerful ways. And this isn't just for individual researchers. In fact, um, Transmart has brought in some pharma 
So it was about six to eight pharma groups in a pre-competitive renal group that they have put their information, their resources, their data, their biopsies um, into Transmart so that people working on kidney disease can access it, learn from it, and add their own information, which is a really um, amazing thing. So what is chronic kidney disease? Tenth most common cause of death, as we talked about. And the symptoms are quite, um, quite severe. So nausea and vomiting, lack of appetite, fatigue and weakness, lack of mental sharpness and chest pain. So you can imagine as these things increase, um, people become less and less able to work. And in fact, what they find is that as people, um, the people who are most often affected are in their main breadwinning years. So this is a grave impact on families and communities in Africa because, oh, and shortness of breath, um, you know, in Africa, the people who are affected are often the poorest of the poor already. So what H3 Africa is searching, trying to do using their genomic approach is searching for low tech, low infrastructure therapies. Now this is because before this time, the infrastructure and, and um, technology have been really uh, large and heavy, right? So it costs lots of money in this high infrastructure. And this is not a good setup for Africa for, for the poorest of the poor. So if you could come up with a way to do this, similar to the, to the kind of revolution that's happened for cancer research, uh, where it's precision medicine, um, it, it would ease the burden on fragile healthcare systems and patients. So these, these are countries where there is no health insurance uh, by and large. And so patients are paying out of pocket for therapies that they can't afford. So the risk factors for uh, chronic kidney disease are poverty and socioeconomic distress. So you see cases increase wherever malnutrition, hazardous work conditions, and pollution increases. So um, you're gonna see people really affected who are not able to sustain um, the burden of that. So how would you, how is H3 Africa mitigating the cost of care for individuals? So first, like the first step for someone who thinks they have chronic kidney disease is a biopsy. This is an invasive procedure. It's also extremely expensive, out of reach for most people. So instead of that, H3 Africa is hoping to find a way to do a urine analysis where all you would need is a microscope um, to find out whether or not you have CKD. And then the question becomes, why even bother doing a biopsy? Because the next step is dialysis. And dialysis, this is the really high infrastructure part. So not only do you have to go in three times a week for your dialysis, but it can last four hours. So if you can imagine holding down a job while going in three times a week for four hours um, to do something like that. And then the fix for kidney disease is a transplant. Well, kidneys, healthy kidneys are extremely rare. So there's a robust black market for kidneys and this leads to kidney harvesting, human trafficking, is a, a real problem. So if you could instead slow the progression of disease using um, these precision medicine genomic therapies, then this would be a great win for, for people. So most patients um, go untreated, particularly if you're not a breadwinner, winner, if you're a woman, for example, um, who's at home with kids, the, the patient's family may choose not to treat. Another reason is as you can see, what if you lived in Gabon and you weren't right next to those red dots and you had to travel all the way over there for your dialysis from the other side of the country, that, that would be a major burden. Here we go in Angola, another thing. Dialysis centers can tend to be in the major cities and not easily accessible. So what they find is that chronic dialysis was too expensive or difficult to reach for 2.3 to 7.1 million of end-stage kidney deaths in 2010. In Nigeria, 80% of renal patients only dialysize for three months. And so survival rates are extremely low. And it's not just unaffordable for patients and their families, it's un unaffordable for state, states and their infrastructure. So high-income countries like the United States typically spend two to 3% of our healthcare budget, which is about billions of dollars, right? On those who have end-stage kidney disease, but those people only represent 0.03% of total health, of total populations. So you can imagine that this is just not an affordable treatment for, for states to sustain with fragile healthcare systems already. 
It's also a climate burden. Dialysis is a, has a heavy toll on the environment. So to do dialysis for 2 million people, you create 9,000 tons of mostly plastic waste and you use about 160 billion liters of water. So if you could move away from this dialysis system towards something more similar to a genomic system, then you would be um, really alleviating a burden on, on the environment and on people and on states. So History Africa has had a breakthrough in this. Um, they found a gene variant, which is hard to say, apolipoprotein L1. It's highly associated with uh, chronic kidney disease in Africans. And they're hoping that soon this will be translated into therapies to slow the progression of the disease so that we aren't having people with going for dialysis and um, transplants as much, which would be a really wonderful thing. So this is a really exciting area of collaboration. It's a really um, global best practices for international collaborations and we're excited to see where it leads. And now we're gonna hand it over to Becky for the more technical side.